Hi everybody, welcome to the first video that we'll record on the statement of cash flows. In this video, we're going to be specifically looking at the three sections of a statement of cash flows and give a quick example of the operating activities section. So let's first talk about the three sections or the three main sections of a statement of cash flows. The first section is the operating activity section. Here is where your day-to-day -day operations are reflected, specifically the cash. In this section, we're going to analyze the changes in the current assets and the current liabilities, as well as depreciation and gains and losses. The second section is the investing activity section. And in this section, you're going to analyze the long-term assets or the changes in the long-term assets. So what have you purchased? What have you sold? And the third section is the financing activity section. This has to do with borrowing. So any accounts that have to do with the, the company borrowing money, then this is where those accounts would be analyzed. So that would be your long-term liabilities and your owner's equity accounts. It's also important that when we're producing a statement of cash flows that we get these um, sections in order. So operating, investing, and financing. So one way you can remember this is to say, oh, if I had more cash. And maybe that'll help you remember the order that the sections will go in. There are two methods to creating a statement of cash flows. We have the indirect method and the direct method. The indirect method currently is required by GAAP. Um, if you use the direct method, you still have to put the indirect method at the bottom of your statement of cash flows. Now, when we say method, we're specifically talking about the operating activity section. The investing and financing sections are identical under either method. It's how you produce the operating activity section that makes these two methods different. So in this video, we're talking specifically about the indirect method. And in the indirect method, we're in the operating activity section, we are adjusting net income from the accrual method to the cash basis of accounting. So keep in mind that net income is equal to revenues minus expenses. And revenues are made up of cash sales as well as sales that we've made on account. Now again, start thinking, this is the statement of cash flows. We're not really interested in things that were on account. Expenses are also made up of cash payments for expenses plus accrued expenses. Because keep in mind, on the accrual basis of accounting, we recognize revenues when they're earned, not necessarily when cash is received, and we recognize expenses when they're incurred, not necessarily when they're paid. So again, statement of cash flows. We're only interested in cash and how cash is moving. So because of the accrual basis of accounting, we have to adjust everything to cash basis for the statement of cash flows. So keep in mind, on the operating activity section of the statement of cash flows, we're analyzing the current assets, current liabilities, depreciation, and gains and losses. Because we're adjusting net income. Okay, so keep in mind what is included in net income. So all cash sales, all sales on account, as well as all cash expenses, and all incurred or accrued expenses. So let's take a few accounts and analyze them and see how they would be affected on the statement of cash flows. So when accounts receivable increases, so think about accounts receivable increasing, this means that net income increased because when accounts receivable increases, that means we have sold something on account. Someone hasn't paid us yet, so they owe us this money. So it didn't increase cash. Therefore, this is something that would have to be taken out of net income on the operating activity section on the statement of cash flows. If accounts receivable decreases, 
that means that cash was collected. So therefore, that would increase the net income or the operating activity section in the statement of cash flows. So let's look at a current asset like accounts payable. If accounts payable increases, this means an expense has been incurred like a utility bill. And therefore, net income was decreased. But we didn't actually pay for this bill because it increased accounts payable, meaning we owe this money. Therefore, this would be, have to be added back to net income on the operating activity section on the statement of cash flows. But what if accounts payable decreased? Well, that would mean that we've paid toward that account payable. So this would have to be taken out of the operating activity section on the statement of cash flows. Now let's talk about selling of equipment. Well, we were talking about the operating activity section, which we said is where we analyze current assets, current liabilities, depreciation, gains and losses. Well, equipment is an investing activity. But if we sell equipment for a gain more than the book value or for a loss less than the book value, then we've got a gain or a loss. And we said those are analyzed in the operating activity section. So these are kind of almost like twofold. So there's happening in two different places. So when you sell a piece of equipment, the entire amount you sold it for would appear in the investing activity section. Now stick with me. It shows up the entire amount would show up in the investing section. Well, that entire amount includes that gain or that loss, but also the net income number includes the gain or the loss. Remember, gains act like revenue, so it would increase net income, and losses act like expenses, so it would decrease net income. So right now, that gain or loss is appearing in two places on our statement of cash flows. So we would take out a gain in the, activ in the operating activity section, and we would add back a loss on the operating activity section. So here is a pictorial um, of what I just said. So we have net income. We know that gains increase net income because they act like revenues, and we know that losses decrease net income because they act like expenses. Gains and losses are also going to appear in the investing activity section because if we sell an asset for more than the book value, we have a gain. And that entire amount that we sold that asset for is going to appear in the investing activity section. Likewise with a loss. So therefore, a gain which has increased net income is also sitting in the investing activity section. So if we don't take it away somewhere, it's going to be counted twice. So gains have to be subtracted from the operating activity section and losses have to be added back in the operating activity section. Okay, let's go through a few line items here and we're going to talk we're going to say whether or not it appears in the operating uh, operating activity section, the investing activity section, the financing activity section, or if it would appear in a schedule at the very bottom of the statement of cash flows called non-cash investing and financing activity. Or if the transaction actually is not reported on the statement of cash flows at all. We also want to indicate whether it's an increase or a decrease to cash. So let's look at the first one. A loss on sale of land. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. It is not talking about the sale of land, which is an investing activity. It's talking about the loss on the sale of land. And we know that losses are analyzed in the operating activity section. We also know that this entire amount, this sale of the land, would appear in the investing activity section, where the loss would also be included. The loss is also included in net income. So unless we, unless we add it back in the operating activity section, it's included twice on the statement of cash flows, and we don't want that. So it would appear in the operating activity section, and losses get added back. All right, how about an acquisition of equipment by the issuance of note payable? Now, this one's a little tricky, too. We have the purchasing of equipment, which is an investing activity, 
and we have the issuing of a note payable, which is a financing activity. And there's actually no cash changing hands here. So this is actually one of those non-cash investing and financing activities. Let's look at the next one. A payment of long-term debt. Payment of long-term debt. So we're paying our long-term debt. Remember, long-term debt is a financing activity. We, we take out loans or, or, um, or issue stock those types of things to finance the company. So it's a financing activity. But in this case, we're not receiving cash. So cash is not going up here. We are paying cash. So cash is going down. How about the acquisition of building by issuance of common stock? Well, the first thing we should think to ourselves is cash being affected. And we see that it is not. So it doesn't appear in any one of the three sections on statement of cash flows. It appears in that schedule because we're buying a building, which is an investing activity, and we're buying it by issuing stock, which is a financing activity. So this appears in the non-cash investing and financing section. How about the accrual of salary expense? Well, that's building up of salary expense. So we're not paying that. This accrual of salary expense has effectively reduced net income, but it didn't affect cash. Therefore, in the operating activity section, we have to add this back to net income. Now, what about a decrease in inventory? Well, if inventory has decreased, that means we have sold it. And we kind of have to think through this in a, a two-step process because we know that we can sell inventory for cash or we can sell it on account. And we don't really know how we sold it. But it's not really important because we're going to analyze accounts receivable as well. And so if it was on account, it will be, ta it will be taken care of when we analyze accounts receivable. So when we're analyzing each individual account, we're just going to think how would this have affected cash if it had been sold for cash. So a decrease in inventory would have increased cash, and inventory being a current asset, it would appear in the operating activity section. What about an increase in prepaid expenses? Well, let's think about a prepaid expense example, like prepaid rent. Well, if prepaid rent increases, prepaid rent is a current asset, if it increases, that means we have purchased more prepaid rent. And if we purchased more rent or prepaid rent, then cash has gone down. So in the operating activity section, it would be a decrease to cash. What about a decrease in accrued liabilities? Well, accrued liabilities, meaning they, those liabilities are increasing and we're not paying toward them. So these are current liabilities as well, which show up in the operating activity section. If they are decreasing, that means we are paying on them. So that would be another decrease to cash in the operating activity section. So we have I through P on the right hand side there. I would like for you to pause the video and see if you can do the right column there on your own. And once you're finished, come back and we'll check them together. Okay, so here are the answers to the ones on the right there, letters I through P. And I won't go through all of them, but there's a couple that I just want to kind of talk briefly about. And the first one is depreciation, letter K. So remember, depreciation is one of those special expense accounts. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. It doesn't affect cash, but it decreases net income. So net income was decreased by depreciation expense, but depreciation expense never affected cash. So in the operating activity section, we will add depreciation expense back. And also letter P, the payment of a cash dividend. Now, this one you have to kind of think of why are we paying a dividend or where did that, what originated that dividend? And 
That came from the issuing of stock. If we had never issued stock, we wouldn't have a dividend. And issuing stock is a financing activity. So therefore, dividends would fall under the financing activity section. And if we pay dividends, that decreases our cash. So it would be a decrease to the financing activity section. Thank you.